Right, hello, welcome back to part two of making this JCB loading shovel bucket. Right, so this is where we've got to with the bucket so far. 62% uh, of you that watched part one are not subscribed, so chances are you might not have seen part one. If you haven't seen me making the bucket, I'll link it in the description. So yeah, if you want to go and check that out. But yeah, anyway, we're starting where we finished last time, where we need to make some brackets for it now. So I've got a JCB Q-fit bracket laid up again in the back of the bucket now, just to get an idea of where the bracket actually needs to be. So it's not actually going on Q-fit brackets, it's going on the bigger JCB Volvo type of brackets, but they're, they're very similar, so I can get a good idea of this, take some measurements off it of where I need to be. Right, so I've got my bracket drawn and I've got it in sheet cam, but my CNC plasma won't cut 40 mil plate, it's too thick for it, so what I'll have to do is draw this pattern out draw this bracket out as a pattern um, with the CNC machine so then the old magic eye profiler can follow it. Right, so what I'm having to do now is join two bits of card together because the pattern is, or the bracket is about 1250, or just a bit shorter than 1250 mil long. Um, so like I said, I'm going to draw the bracket onto this bit of card with the CNC and then I can use the magic eye with the flame cutting torch to cut the brackets out. So it's it's a lot easier just drawing it on the computer and then drawing it out on here than it is trying to do all your measurements by hand. So it's just quicker and easier to do it like that. So I've got my bit of card laid out onto my CNC table now. So I just need to swap the plasma torch over for um, for this contraption that I made to hold a pen. Right, so that's it mounted. I just have a little spring in there and then some magnets sat on the top just to push the spring down to keep a bit of tension on the pen when it's touching the card. So it, it's uh, wanted refining a bit more if I was using it all the time, but it's not very often I use it. So we'll uh, draw that now. Sometimes it doesn't always come out perfect, but it's you can usually fill in by hand the bits that are not great if the pen, pens come off the card or what have you. Overall, that's come out pretty well. There's a little bit there where the pen came off where I'll have to go over by hand, but that's, that's good. So my plan for this year is to buy a new CNC table with a flame cutting head already on it. So then I can have one machine that can do both. So I can, I can cut up to like 25 mil with my plasma cutter and anything over 25 mil, I can use the flame cutting torch. So then it'll free up all this space that I've got here taken up by this machine. And then with this machine, you need twice as much space anyway, because you've got to have enough space for your pattern and then the same amount of space for your plate. But it's about 20 grand, so I've got a bit more saving to do yet.
So that's maybe the 40 mil plate that I'm going to cut the brackets out of. And I'm going to get that onto there. And there's a fair bit of stuff in the way. But according to my calculations, that plate weighs 566 kilos. And that magnet's rated for 600 kilos. So it's about on its limit of what it can lift. Right, so I've got my pattern set up now, you know, checked it, make sure it follows it round. I've pre drilled two holes, I'm going to uh, flame cut the hole out as well. It's going to be quicker and easier than drilling it. So, yeah, I'm going to cut the hole out first and then move down to here, start from here, cut the bracket out. So that's the first bracket cut out and I've just got it set up again in the back of the bucket. Obviously there's a strap to go under there yet, I'm just offering it up to see what it's like. Um, it didn't cut out as nice as I would have liked it to, I should have had a bit more oxygen pressure on I think. It's, uh, it's not, not done the hole that neat, I'll have to tidy the hole up a little bit. But overall it's alright so I think I'll cut the other one out now. So if you look on the back of these, these boxes, it says 40 PSI. But then when you look on the website, the pressures are a lot higher to, to sort of to make it up as you go along.
that's better. No, that's more like it. And bang on is that. Right, wait for that to cool down and then uh, clean it up. I'm just on cleaning these brackets up now. That's the second one I cut out, and that's spot on, is that one? This is the first one. It's not great. I mean, it's not bad, I can still use it, it just needs, just had to give it a little bit more of a clean up with a grinder. And I laid them on top of each other and sprayed red oxide through the hooks because this one needs a little bit die grinding out around the hook. And the hole is not great, I'm gonna have to die grind a bit out the hole. But that one is spot on. So it's a shame they're not both like that. But anyway, it's still usable. It just needs a bit more tidying up. So I started die grinding these out this morning. And it needed more die grinding out than than what I thought. <clears throat> Especially when it's 40 mil plate. You know, there's a lot to die grind out. So I thought I can do a better job than that. That one needs a little bit taken out as well. It hasn't profiled out big enough. So what I've done is I've been and bought a boring head, boring and facing head. So it's a, a wall, is it called wall, ha wall haptors? Something like that, made in Germany. Supposedly a good, good make. So I've been wanting to get one for a while because I've had a few jobs now where a boring head would have come in handy. So I've bitten the bullet and I've been and bought one. Tools for you is where I bought is from so if you're in the uk and he's at castleford if you're after anything check him out make sure you mention snowball engineering because he might give me a discount next time right so i've got these brackets tacked together now um so i can bar them both through at the same time the top hole is fairly good so what i'm going to do is put this um <coughs> countersink in the milling machine and use that as like an alignment cone to find the center of the hole then obviously take that out put the boring head in and then that should be, it should be bang in the middle then, and then just run the bar in through, bar and bar through and uh, bar them both out at the same time. Right, so I've got that set up, I think. I'm just using a bit of high-speed steel because that's what it came with. That should just be skimming. But it'll be touching in some places and not in others just because the hole is obviously not quite 100% round. But it's a couple of mil undersized. So it wants to be 53 mil. It measures about 51 at the moment. So we'll send that through, see what happens. I've never used a boring head before, so this is a new experience for me. So it was working really well and then I've got to that bit over there where it's, you can see there's a bit where it's the start and stop the flame cutting and it's 
there must be a hard bit in it because it's just blunt and the tool steel so might have to try and diagram that that bit out there and resharpen that So that's that cut through. While it's still in the mill, I think I'll take the boring head back out and put the put this in and just give it a bit of a countersink and then flip it over and do it same on the other side. Um, and then, then brackets are ready. Right, so that's them brackets ready now. They're bored through. Well, just stop on. Cleaned up, so yeah, they're ready. So I need to cut some plates for them to be welded onto now, onto the back of the bucket. Right, so that's both of the straps pressed to fit the top of the bucket. So the bucket wants tipping up now, so the back is level. So then I can weld these on and weld the brackets on. Before I do that, I'm just gonna grind down the side of them, clean all the mill scale off. And then in the middle, I'll clean a bit down the middle as well, where the bracket goes. Grind all the scale off. Makes them weld on a lot nicer. Brackets are fairly clean already. They just might want to tidy up to grind down a little bit. And then, uh, then they're ready to go on.
So the bracket's tacked on now with the right centres. Uh, I haven't got the straps tacked all the way down yet because you can just see down there there's a bit of a gap under the middle. So when you weld this weld on the inside and that weld at the bottom, it bows the backing a little bit. So that one's not quite as bad. But the way to get around that is you tack this little bridge, a little bridge over there like that, about in the middle where the bow is, and then just put a jack in between the bracket and the top of there and the bracket keeps everything straight and the jack just pulls the plate of the bucket up to the strap and then you can tack it all together and then the, then the bracket holds everything nice and straight Right, so that's all the welding done on the back now. And all the straps are welding on, all the brackets are welded on. So I've only done a single weld down the brackets because there's no point, no point doing any more. It's not, it's not a bucket for ripping rock out or anything, it's just a general purpose farm bucket. This one's going to get used for loading muck into muck spreaders, so it's, it's not going to have a massively difficult life. But yeah, we'll turn it upside down now and then I'll just weld down the back of them. So I'll just put a strap and some D rings through there and then just lower it down, weld them up, turn it back the right way up, and then that's the brackets done.
Right, she's back the right way up again now. So that's the brackets on. So that's what my welds look like. I did uh, did them all in one go. You know, non-stop. It's about a meet, just over a meter. So there's them um, gussets to make that I keep going on about to go in there. And then I spoke to the customer this morning and he asked if I could put a spill guard on the front to stop uh, muck going over the top, getting into your carriage and everything when you're, you know, when you're scooping chicken muck and that up. So I've got another guard to make to go along there. But I still have the plate on the CNC table from when I cut out the top box. So I can use that for the spill guard on the front here. So that's not too bad. So we'll do that. Right, so I've got this top plate cut out, this uh, top spill guard. I put a bit of a press on it just to give it a bit of extra strength. So I'll get it set up on the top of the bucket now and then I've cut some gussets out to go in the back and weld them in. And then the middle, the middle gussets, I've put a hole through them to use as lifting eyes as well. So that's the spill guard on the top. That's what I was meaning by my lifting eyes. I've just put a hole in them. I've done them out of thicker plate there, out of 15 mil. So I can use them as lifting eyes, and then these are just six mil. So yeah, that's that on. So I'll mark my tacks on now, and then uh, weld it around.
Right, so the last job now is to weld these side gussets in. Um, some bucket manufacturers only weld little short ones in that go to like there, that have that press on either end. But then it just makes a place for stuff to get stuck behind it. So if you put them in full length, then nothing can get stuck behind it. And then there's that one to do welding at that side as well. I put this acro prop in to put a bit of pre-stress on the sides. Because when you weld them in, if you don't pre-stress them, they can bow in a little bit. So that's what that's in there for. So that is everything welded up now. Everything, uh, yeah, they're all welded up. Top's all welded round. Brackets are all welded on. So that's it for fabricating. Now it's time to wash it off and paint it. Right, it's ready for some paint now, so I've had a bit of a sweep up. Uh, I've given it a wash off. I sprayed it all with neat degreaser first, then give it a power wash off. So it's all nice and clean. I've been round it and like de-splattered it all, scraped any bits of weld splatter off or anything. So now I'm going to spray it with red oxide first, and then I'm going to spray it with black. So this is what it looks like, bare metal. For me, the painting it is the hardest part of the whole job, getting it right and making it look right. So, probably be a 10 foot paint job. I mean, it'll look all right from 10 feet away.
Right, so that's the red oxide dried, so we can put some black on it now. Right, so I've got the first coat of black on. I think I'm going to give it another coat because it's a bit patchy in areas, especially on that side. But it was difficult, difficult to reach in. It might be better now it's sat on the trestles. And the outside doesn't look too bad. No runs on it anyway. Not not on this coat. It might be on the next coat. But it's uh, it's satin black. It's not gloss black. So. Yeah, we'll give it another coat. So that's the finished bucket. So I've got my stickers put on. Paintwork has not come out quite as nice as I wanted it to, it's a little bit misty. But for an agricultural bucket that's going to get covered in mud the first time it's used, you know, it's, uh, you won't be able to tell. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of building the bucket. If I was building them all the time, I'd have the process refined a lot more. You know, I'd cut everything out all in one go and put it all together, but I only sort of make one a year, so I just make it up as I go along. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.